Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. All right. This is going to be another Calabatus pattern. We tie a lot of these types of patterns because Calabatus are, are super yummy food for uh, a lot of trout in still waters, lakes and reservoirs. So this is a an unweighted soft tackle. I'll usually use this uh, not as deep at the floating or inter intermediate line depending on where the fish are. Uh, but it's nice because it's, it's unweighted so it can suspend and uh, you can kind of just work it slowly um, above, above weed beds or just down from the surface. So um, Cheech did a soft tackle a while back that had a bead, uh, which is a good pattern. It's not quite as good as this one, though, um, and he'll have to admit that. <laughs> but uh, no, uh, these are all good patterns, and we've uh, tested them out. So I've got a fooling mill nymph hook. This is a 3585. And uh, this is a 16. So it's going to start off and dress the hook a little bit. And just working back to the bend of the hook, I'm going to tie in some tailing material. So <clears throat> what I like for a lot of calabatus patterns is... Um, partridge. So for this one, I actually ended up using a different uh, material for the soft tackle. We'll get to that in a minute. But for the tail, I still like partridge. And so what I like is in the kind of the shoulder area, there's some feathers that have a little bit more distinct barring on them. And if you look at the calabatus nymphs, they're typically a lighter colored tail. So um, I'll, I'll just peel a few of the fibers off of this one to use for the tail. So we've got our partridge fibers and I'll just measure out a little bit less than the hook shank length, about like that. Um, and then just do a little pinch wrap to get those on. And you will just want those to be on the top. And just a couple of uh, turns to secure them. So the body on this one's going to consist of some Nature Spirit Barred Wild Turkey Biots. So what, what this is, it's kind of hard to see, but you can, well, actually you see it pretty good. Uh, you'll notice that these turkey biots are barred. So along the length of each of the actual biots, you've got some nice dark uh, barring. So what I'll do is I'll choose a fiber that has that barring closer to the tip. Well, it depends on the size of uh, pattern I'm going to be tying. And then this is what you end up with. So it's the, the one, and you want to, typically you want to strip it off of the stem, not, not cut it. But you'll notice that along this top edge here, there's a, it, it's kind of a transparent little uh, edge. And I like to trim that because on, this is a size 16. If you don't trim that, then it's, too thick and it just kind of gets in its own way as you wrap it. So I'll just come up here and I'm going to trim out the uh, the webbing a little bit. So when I'm done, I'm left with about half or two thirds of what it was. Now the thing with biots, and there you could go into a whole dissertation of how to tie these in, but the most important thing is I want the ridge. So this feather actually has um, a ridged part, which you kind of see there. Um, and so I want that to be in the back as I wrap. So what I'll do is I'll tie it so that this, the piece of webbing that I cut, that side is going to be facing forward as I wrap. And the way I do that is I tie the uh, fiber in just like that. And it kind of comes over a little bit diagonally to the shank of the hook. And that way, as I start to wrap this, uh, that ridged part will be in the back. And so now I'm just going to secure the rest of this and then wrap forward and build up the body. A little bit of taper, not much. Okay. 
Okay, we'll stop a little bit before the thorax there. And I'm going to grab my handy dandy CNF Biot hackle pliers. And the reason these are nice for Biots is because the Biots are going to be, you're going to clamp them in with the, uh, the jaws like this, not oriented perpendicular. And then you've got this little ring that will hold it and keep it in that direction because you want the Biot to, to wrap flat around the shank. So it's just oriented 90 degrees to what you'd see a typical hackle plier. And so I'm just going to grab that with my plier and just be careful not to pull it out or break it, which is one of the nice things about these CNF pliers is that uh, it has a little bit of a cushion in there. And then I'm just going to start to wrap and just be careful around that point. And then I want that to wrap forward and get the little ridge, give it enough spacing that the ridge is pronounced and that you've got some room in between each wrap. And then as I wrap, you can see that barring that I showed you earlier start to show up in between the ridges. So normally on a regular bite, you'd actually have to do a um, wire or a piece of mylar or something to get that effect. But with this, it's natural. Another reason these Nature Spirit biots are just phenomenal. So I'm going to come up here and wrap just right before the thorax. And you also, when you tie these off, you got to be careful because they are, they are delicate in that thread. This is 70 De Niro. Slice right through those, which you can use to your advantage. So as I, I'm going to move my thread forward. Oh, you'll notice I got a little piece like that that's trying to come up. And we'll just capture him. Well, we'll come back to him in a minute. Um, holding tightly to my thread, boink, your uh, bayet will rip out. Now I'm going to come back here and address this little dude that's popping up. There we go. So the most important thing is just to get that secured down. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do here, I will tie in a little bit of a hot spot. So I like to use iStub. iStub is probably my favorite dubbing. I think the uh, mixture of the natural, or that not the natural, there's not anything natural about it, the uh, mylar with the natural looking dubbing in there um, just makes it irresistible to the fish. Uh, I, so I'm going to grab some hot orange. This is UV hot orange. And I also grabbed a little bit of dubbing wax and jammed it into the hook. I'm going to pay attention to what I'm doing here. But then I've got a little bit of this dubbing. You don't need much. This is just going to be a really uh, tight hot spot. Okay, just like that. And, you're gonna, and make sure you leave yourself plenty of room here because we're going to tie in a little bit more dubbing to lay the base of our soft tackle. And, um, and we'll put in our soft tackle. But we're actually going to do the soft tackle first. And so here's a little trick. Cheech likes this, and I started doing it this way. I've seen Hans Wieleman um, tie him this way. And so I, I just like the way that um, the way that you can wrap the hackle on here, and uh, the way it looks when it's done. It probably doesn't make it catch any more or less fish, but I think it's easier to tie. So for the soft tackle, this is probably one of my favorite new newish products that I've uh, been using from Whiting and that's a 4B hen cape. So being that it's a cape you'll see a wide variety of uh, sizes of feather as opposed to a saddle which is a little bit more uniform and it's a non-genetic it's not bred to be a dry fly so the the fibers here are soft they're not as stiff as a dry fly hackle and um, so these 4B birds they make for some awesome soft tackles and they come in some really great colors this one is the greenwell and um, so i've chosen a, a feather that uh, fits the sizing that i want and, and the way you just determine that is i just kind of hold this up it's not like a sizing dry fly hackle uh, you would actually just kind of look at the length and you want these to be about the body length so I'll just prep the feather by 
just peeling off the ends close to the webby part. And as opposed to other soft tackles where you're going to tie them in in the tip and then wrap that way, we're going to do this a little backwards. And so we're going to, well, first off, trim off a few more fibers here. I don't want them that long. Okay, so we're going to take our stem like that and just attach that right behind the eye. And then I'm going to work my thread back to the hot spot, just right inside of the hot spot. And then I can come in here and trim the stem. Another reason or advantage of doing it this way is that you've got more thread holding that stem down. So you don't have the problem of where you, when you uh, tie in your soft hackle and pull the hackle pliers, it pops out. So you're not going to run into that as much. Okay, I'm going to grab a little bit more dubbing. In this case, I'm just going to grab some, uh, this is a olive brown or pheasant tail. I can't remember which. Ice dubbing. And again, this is just to build up our thorax a bit. And I want to stop right behind the, uh, or right in the middle of the two pieces of, of uh, dubbing there. Okay. Because that way I can pull my uh, thread forward. And that's what will attach the, the hackle here. So I'll just grab some hackle pliers. And then I'm going to start rotating this and uh, winding it back. If you find you need to, uh, you can always preen the fibers after each wrap. But like I said, this method here makes it so you don't have to do that as much. And I'm going to get that right into where I tied off. Now, what you do here is you just cut your thread right through with pretty much one wrap. And let the thread hang and I'll come in here and I'm going to trim off that hackle. The excess there. Not uh, Make sure you don't get anything else with it. Okay, now all I need to do is create a nice cleanish looking head. And I'm just going to do that with the thread, working my way back towards where I tied the hackle in. That creates a nice little head there that we can then whip finish. And I love these midge whip finishers from TMCO and tie that off and there we go so again I'll fish these with uh, intermediate line or a even a floating line, and um, this is a deadly calabatus pattern. Could be just fished as an emerger or, or whatever you want, but uh, it's unweighted, so it will suspend, and you can do a lot of stuff with it. So, give one of those uh, 4B hen capes a try. They're pretty awesome. It's a fun pattern to tie.